but it wasn't always so. BBC One. In the old days, TV meant a box in the corner of the room that had a captive audience. It started off with just one channel, the BBC, in 1936. They were then joined by independent television in 1955. BBC Two was added 11 years later. Channel Four was launched in 1982. And last but not least, Five came along in 1997. The launch of Sky in 89 introduced the idea of multi-channel viewing. Since then, with the introduction of digital TV and video on demand, TV is being delivered to us in more ways than ever before. Counting to the ident in five, four... And it's up to people like the continuity announcer Peter Offer to help us along. Will they or won't they? Minty and Gary's mum don't even go there. EastEnders in half an hour here on BBC One. And talking of too close for comfort... When I first started announcing, there were just four channels, BBC One, Two, ITV and Channel Four. Now, of course, there are hundreds of them. And viewers need, even more so these days, to be guided through the sea of channels that there are. Where we just were promoting, say, BBC One and BBC Two, it was relatively easy. We could talk on BBC One about what was on BBC Two and vice versa. Now we have BBC Three and BBC Four, our digital channels, and uh, a plethora of radio channels. There's all sorts of linked media there that we need to make the viewers and listeners, for that matter, aware of. Two, another reformed spendaholic checks the finances on BBC Three and on BBC Four meet the remarkable handkerchief tree. It's essential to guide the viewer in order to help them keep watching any one channel. But in this sea of choice, broadcasters need to make sure their channel makes it into our list of favourites. People like choice, but they like to know where they are. In the multi-channel world of two, three hundred channels, people tend to watch about six or seven channels all the time and not really stray from them. Much as in a supermarket, there used to be, in the 1960s, about 1,000 lines of product. There are now typically 20, 30, sometimes 100,000 lines of product in a large supermarket. But people aren't eating a, a, a much wider range of food. They stick with what they know. That's how we are. Like food brands, the broadcaster needs to make sure they're in the viewer's top five choices. To do that, they've come up with a way that allows channels to be recognised quickly and easily. These are known as idents. The ident is the first clear message to the viewer of what a channel stands for. In the old days of five main networks, it was a simple task. These days, the ident is one of the strongest visual representations of a channel. probably not dissimilar to if you go and buy a product you're actually going to buy the product but sometimes you know you can get a bit of a kick out of the you know the bag that it comes in or the wrapper that it's wrapped up in or the you know the packaging but it's not enough to just display the name of the channel the ident now has to offer much more if you have the mindset that we're creating advertising, I think that's really hard to get cut through and viewers just think, stop advertising at me. Whereas if we create content in its own right, then it's got way more chance of people responding to it. Production values for idents have rocketed in recent years because they now have to sum up the whole personality of a channel, the channel's brand. Idents are the brand of the channel. You know, T-shirts are T-shirt, and that's a bit like a piece of television content. But people are very particular about which T-shirt or which bit of TV content they want to buy or watch. And so brands, or in the case of T-shirts, labels, they help us make choices. Channel 4's programmes are very distinctive and uh, create a unique identity for it, and I think the identity has to be unique. That is why we invest a lot of time and energy in the identity to make people go, oh, only Channel 4 would do something like that. Any self-respecting channel will now have a set of glossy idents, but it's getting a bit extreme. 
channels now spend millions and millions of pounds getting their eye dents right before each show. T I, I was watching uh, TV last night and w watching a BBC Two eye dent that looked exactly the same as to there's a Channel Four eye dent, and I just think it shows that I think probably BBC Two wants to be seen as being as modern and trendy as Channel Four is. So therefore, they've completely revamped their on-screen identity. I think quite clearly to be a little bit like Channel Four. The time when you see an eye dent, usually at the end of one show and the start of another, is a crucial time for the broadcasters, because they've got to make sure they don't lose their viewers to someone else. So increasingly, the continuity announcer leaps in as the credits roll to try and keep hold of the viewer. And Sam might be coming home sooner than you think. Don't miss next week's Life on Mars, or you can catch up with last week. So you can see there, just in that short um, voiceover, that we were told about next week's episode, the final episode. We were told if you'd missed an episode, quickly switch over to BBC Four. And then we were also told, and immediately after this programme on BBC One is this. And that's before the programme's even ended. And then if you didn't hear that voiceover, a visual reminder of all of those options to keep them in BBC network space. Every second of airspace in between programmes is really, really valuable. And that's what's great, because when you are channel surfing, when you hit BBC One, you will know that you're in BBC One space. And that's, that, that's, the, that's the key to brilliant channel design, I think. Channel design is all about creating a sleek and engaging experience. And as competition for our attention stiffens, the quality expected is getting higher and higher. Now, what seems to be the problem? Well, it seems it's a little bit embarrassing. The Channel 4 promo team are on location filming their trailer for the new documentary series on embarrassing illnesses. Very good, very good. Is that there? Excellent. Very nice. Director right. Phil Lind has got a busy day ahead. Because of the nature of the script and because there are so many patients, we're trying to get about 24 shots. And I think in a day like this, you, you wouldn't want to try more than about 12, really. So we're going at double speed. <coughs> Get it all. <laughs> you never know. Many trailers these days are now made with this attention to detail, and Channel 4 are pushing the bounds further and further when it comes to marketing their shows. Sometimes we're actually creating our own sort of mini film to set something up. You might take a drama like Desperate Housewives or, or Lost, which are in themselves, you know, very, very high ro rating, very top, good quality programmes. But some people might say, well, that's enough, and take those and, and cut promos from them, as we do with some programmes. But, for instance, with Lost, we went to Hawaii and we actually shot with the cast uh, on a beach, which was all very theatrical. It was like they they were all wearing ball gowns that were all sort of, like, torn, as if they'd just been in sort of, like, a plane wreck with huge planes burning in the background. And, you know, again, it was sort of setting a tone of something to actually create a real sense of event about something. All of us are guilty. All of us are guilty. All of us. Huge amounts of money go into promoting big shows like Lost because these can pull in large numbers of viewers. When it comes to winning an audience, the choice of content is key. The most important thing is the actual content. Viewers will vote with their remote controls. If they don't like the show, 